Hello again everyone, it's Magic Dave here and this is Sapiens. So in the last video I talked a little bit about what I was going to do next um, and I talked about in particular the terrain and, and digging and filling and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, I've, I did have, um, I've still got it in here, I just wanted to show you one last time. This is how the um, digging uh, UI used to work um, and so um, it, you know it's fairly complicated and you can actually see it's flicking in and out so there are a few bugs in it um, and it just, it didn't look that great. Uh, and it also had this problem where it, um, it was quite different to how you interact normally with, with like a, a house or something, you click on it and then you can do stuff with it or a, or a tree, you can you know command things um, here and then uh, you know, you've, you've chosen the object and then you're choosing the action. Whereas with the terrain, you were choosing the action and then choosing the location. And that was confusing. Uh, so as you can see, there's now a um, very faint little outline around each hexagon as you're looking around. I've kind of shied away from this, but I do think that it's probably the right solution here and it allows me to make it really clear which, uh, which tile you'll be interacting with. So the idea will be that you'll um, see this all the time, I'll probably change the exact look of it, but I'm, I'm relatively happy with it already. Uh, so then you'll, you'll click on that and then you'll get this sort of wheel here which will actually interact with that tile that you've selected. And if you wanted to select a larger area then it would be the same as, as if you were um, clicking a tree or something and you'd go into a sort of top-down multi-select thing. Now obviously this is going to be a bit funny if it's got terrain in here so I think I may have to work on this little mini map view and make it a bit more realistic perhaps render some objects in here or something so I will have to think about that but this is a decent start we'll just see how we get on with all of that I think I think it's going to work out okay okay so I've made a bit of progress um, and it's not quite in the area that I was anticipating but it's still good progress nonetheless as you can see the look at UI is what, what I call it is now down the bottom um, so that tells you what you're looking at. Uh, the reason that I needed to sort of work on that was that I had to make it say terrain when you were looking at the terrain. Um, so previously that look at uh, information was um, only working for game objects and not the terrain at all. So when I looked at adding terrain I sort of noticed that that code was a little bit out of date. It wasn't really nicely integrated into the whole kind of UI system anymore. It was like the first thing that I had actually added UI wise. So I thought I would uh, just, just sort of reassess the whole thing. You know, it didn't look that good up the top there as a sort of block. Um, it was flashing a lot as you sort of went in and out looking at different things. Uh, so I thought that it was time to sort of give it a good overhaul. So now there's sort of this new UI manager object for uh, the look at UI and then this, it's all built with the inspect UI. So this panel um, is all sort of, you know, it'll hide the, the little information that was there and bring up this extra information as you click on things. Uh, and it sort of manages the, the animations in and out. Uh, and you know fades it out over time as well so that it's not flickering and it all just works nice and seamlessly. That kind of thing like seems like it might be easy on the surface but yeah it, can, it did take a little while you know I, I learnt with Blockheads that if you don't really keep on top of your uh, UI code if you don't keep it kind of tidy and, and refactor it a lot then it can turn into an absolute nightmare to, to maintain so uh, I do spend quite a lot of time just keeping everything nice and tidy so yeah that was sort of what I've been working on in the last couple of days. Uh, so now you can click on the terrain just like um, just like before how you could click on an object you can also now click on the terrain and actually see the same thing with this sliding up and, and all the same sort of um, code for all of this stuff. So if I queue up a dig order I can uh, see, see that there's a dig order there and then I can cancel it uh, and everything's working exactly the same. So none of that stuff sort of you couldn't cancel dig orders I don't think before um, you know it was all separate code Whereas now it's it's just all acting exactly the same as when you click on everything else. So I think that's way, way, way better. And I, I've totally got used to this um, little outline that we've got here. And I think that it's all going to work really well. Uh, Multi-select is not working. It'll actually crash if I hit that right now. So I've got to work on that pretty soon. Uh, also, I need to now work on this um, filling order. So um, up until now, you've only ever been able to fill with dirt. Uh, so I'm going to maybe, I'm thinking probably add a little button out to the side here that's going to allow me to choose which uh, which type of thing I'd like to fill it with. Okay, so it's been a few more days and I've 
got quite a lot done. Um, as you can see, first up, the gravel actually has a texture on it. Now, I've experimented this with this before. I've used um, normal maps. I had a little ripple texture on the sand right back in the early days, and I decided that I didn't really like it at the time. Um, there were um, a few kind of technical issues with doing it, but also, yeah, just the, there were seams and things. But also, it just didn't really suit the look of the game, and it just it started to it just basically made it look like it was trying to be a normal kind of textured game but didn't um yeah it wasn't really pulling it off like it needed more detail and it was just going to turn into you know lose its individual style and turn into another kind of textured looking game and so i gave up on it but now i've actually managed to do something that i think works really well so the reason that i did this was that i added the ability to dig down through uh, through the grass and find different types of terrain um, so if you, as you can see over here this is uh, i've made it so that the, all of the terrain is always sand when you look at it and then um, if you clear the grass uh, you'll see the sand that it's growing on um, obviously that's not going to stay that way you're not going to have grass um, thick grass growing all over the sand everywhere but, um, but that's how i've set it up for testing uh, so yeah, I've just made it that there's different layers um, underneath the ground, which is something that just couldn't even happen before. So now it supports that, so we've got sand, and then if you dig down another layer you get to dirt, and if you dig the dirt then you get to gravel, and if you dig the gravel then you get to rock. So that's all working really well, I had to really change a lot of how the terrain system all works to make that work. Um, basically, so uh, let me just talk a little bit about how the, the terrain system works. So this is a multiplayer game, and you've got a world that's larger than Earth, and so it obviously cannot generate uh, uh, pre-generate what exactly is happening at each individual point right down to the core of the earth or whatever and then send that information across the network that's just not feasible so what happens is the client generates an exact copy of the world using the same seed as what the server does so you see um, in, in the default state of the world you see exactly um, the same as what everyone else sees but that's all generated on your own client machine without any real need to talk to the server but when, then when you modify things, that does need to be saved and it needs to be sent across the network. So these, these vertices, we've saved out the modification to say that it's, it's been dug down. And what I've done is just made it so that uh, the engine will then assign different types as you get further and further down. So the client doesn't need to know that this is gravel from the server. All it really needs to know is that it has been dug down three blocks and then it can figure out that it would be gravel, just like the server figures out that it would be gravel. But of course this um, completely breaks down when you start filling because the player can place any blocks they like into multiple layers up high. And so the server needs to know that um, you've placed gravel on top of rock, on top of sand, on top of uh, whatever. And the client uh, doesn't need to know that, it only needs to know what's on the top. So I've set all of that up as well. So the server um, saves out all the information about what you've placed, whereas um, it only sends through the top layer to the client. So it's all very, very highly optimized for network usage. Um, you know, there's very minimal traffic that needs to be sent across, uh, but you've got full control to really dig large areas, fill areas right up with all sorts of different types, and it should all still run really fast. I need to quickly say also that you can play this in single player and when you do that the server runs uh, within the same process so it's seamless so even though it's always split into server client you can play it single player so anyway when I started digging down and I saw that there was gravel and rock they both looked exactly the same they both looked like this because there was no texturing and I just thought um, I, I'm gonna have to deal with this uh, you can't tell at a glance which is gravel which is rock and so I fixed that um, and I experimented with a number of different kind of texture options. Um, initially I did a Photoshop sort of crystallize effect and it looked quite good, although it had seams everywhere, which were a real problem. Uh, and so then I really started to think about how I was gonna deal with the seams and I looked at maybe sort of you know blurring the edges and stuff and it was really starting to be quite a problem. Um, because you've got uh, triangles that could sort of um, match up on flipped kind of boundaries and, and various configurations, uh, it was quite a quite a technical challenge to try to get rid of the seams. Um, and in the end, I decided that I would embrace the hexagon, and that would allow me to actually have the seams along hexagon boundaries and make sure that uh, if there was an overlapping hexagon, that they matched up on all possible combinations. And it was quite a large kind of job, and I was experimenting a lot with it. Um, but I'm really happy with the result. So basically, this hexagon-based um, 
uh, texture is applied to every single surface on the terrain and then I've got the option to choose uh, what materials it mixes between. So the sand does also have these hexagons in it but it's far more subtle than the gravel uh, and the grass can too and I've also um, tweaked the edges between so that they also use these um, sort of hexagon, hexagon blending kind of uh, edges uh, which I'm also really really happy with um, although I may you know may tweak it more in the future but it's pretty good. So all of that stuff's working really well. Um, you can now set the uh, fill type as well. So I've got this little button out to the side here. Um, I did think a lot about this. I'm not an, I'm not 100% happy with it. Uh, the problem is once you've once you've queued up, you've got a cancel order here too. So um, it has to sort of allow the space for that. So that's why it's up here, um, and it sort of matches in. And I thought maybe there might be other things that need a bit of configuration as well. So it should allow for settings for any any of these different order types. Um, and so then when you hit the set the fill type, then you can choose the different types. Um, I've just been playing with a possible bevel uh, to see how that looked. But um, yeah, so you can just set it and then it's set wherever you look from then on until you change it and you can just um, tell them to fill things. And as long as they've got the resources, they can then fill it with the different types. Uh, so you could build potentially a sort of gravel path uh, or yeah, sort of have a lot more control now over what happens with the trailer <laughs> all trying to fill it. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy with how all that's sort of working. Um, I just actually I wanted to show you just how the water works. So it's a bit hard to see because of the, the lighting at the moment, but there is water in this hole. So if you dig down then and you hit sea level, then you will hit water and that will happen across the entire planet. And that's how the water works. Uh, that um, is a nice kind of solution. There's no flowing water and that's really intentional. You can't, you just can't mix flowing water with um, a different formable terrain uh, planet sized engine that's just never going to work so there's no flowing water. Um, I could potentially do something like Minecraft and have sort of water source blocks that sort of have limited flow distance or something but I'm not too concerned about that at the moment and I think it's kind of it, it makes for some interesting gameplay mechanics too like uh, you could have to go to the mountains to be able to get down to sort of rock that contains certain ores and things. I should also mention actually that the exposure has uh, been tweaked so it is if, if you're thinking oh it's looking a bit brighter than it did in the middle of the day that's because it is uh, I'll keep tweaking that uh, but what, what it was actually happening was um, sometimes when you went between different uh, like an, if you looked at a really bright tree for instance this is kind of the worst case if I like back to that and then come through you see that the trees change in color it's getting darker so it was the, the brightness of the tree right behind me is influencing the the kind of lighting of the scene and then if I switch through it then it has to it has to adjust and it sort of adjusts over time now before that was actually flickering uh, the whole scene was flickering it was oscillating between uh, the light and dark and I've been trying to track that down for 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 years actually and I finally found that yesterday so I'm very happy about that so it's lovely and smooth now and it's giving me a bit more control about how to adjust the exposure when you're moving through light and dark areas and things uh, so I've just been tweaking that a bit I, I, I like to I'd like to have it a bit more dynamic than it was so I'm quite liking this sort of brighter uh, brighter effect so anyway I'm quite excited about where I'm at here um, because now now that I can actually do this I can start putting in some sort of different ore packets around the place so maybe having a few surface clumps of iron to sort of mark where there might be a bit more iron down below and get them actually sort of digging down into into the ground and finding ores and then maybe crafting a few things so yeah we'll need some kind of a, a furnace or something I guess and uh, yeah I, I haven't um, I haven't planned out exactly where I'm going to go with that but that's what I plan on focusing on from here so let's see how I get on with that and uh, yeah don't forget to wishlist sapiens on steam please and I will see you again next time.